What's up guys? Today I'm doing a video on a credit card tool. And what we're looking at here is my preferred gold card <laughs> from my grocery store. I am a preferred member. Actually, funny story, when I got this card uh, in the mail, I thought like, oh cool, like felt all special. And you know, because I happen to distribute the mail, after putting out another like four or 500 of these to uh, people in my area, I realized, eh, not so special. But anyway, underneath this, I have a Tool Logic card. These are very cool, very similar to my beloved favorite Victorinox Swiss card. Underneath that, I have, of course, the tool for the review. This is an Ian Sinclair Card Sharp 2. Uh, I was first introduced to these by Gavco. Gavco did a video on his. I believe he has a Teflon coated version. There's two versions that in the brush stainless. And then uh, Sherman 614, Dan, he also uh, did a video on his. And, um, you know, eventually I figured I'd, I'd have to get one to try it out. Uh, I do love the concept and idea of a credit card size tool slash knife. Okay, now unlike this card, um, all you can do with this is jimmy some doors open, which I'm not interested in doing this video. With this, I have a lot of options, a lot of tools, including a fairly uh, large knife compared to some other, uh, you know, small credit card size tools, um, very useful. But uh, there's also other tools in here, as opposed to this, which is just a dedicated knife. Now, with not, not knowing anything about these tools or how they function, a lot of people would gravitate towards this just because there's more options. Well, both of these things have pros and cons. I carry this for more than a month now, and it's finally time to do a review. I purposely um, took this out to use it a bunch because there's a lot of concerns uh, a lot of people have with these basically the biggest concern is durability people really want to know i mean it's a cool concept and everything uh very novelty seems awesome but the question is you know will they last or will they break well after a month of carrying my wallet it has not yet broken but there are some concerns to talk about it and and really um why or why not you may why or why not but even though it's not broken yet, um, there are some concerns, but you have to ask yourself why you may want something like this and will it serve a good purpose for you? So let's talk about it. Um, what you don't see on the table right now is my Victorinox Swiss card. Now I've personally owned at least a dozen Victorinox Swiss cards. I love them. They're a fantastic credit card size tool. The knife is great. The scissors are awesome. There's a couple different variants on them. Some of them are translucent. The ones I have are all gray. I actually got um, about 15 of them on eBay on a, uh, an auction, I want to say maybe six or seven years ago. <laughs> that was back when I used to buy a bunch of TSA confiscated stuff on eBay. If you look occasionally, you'll get big lots of like scissors or knives that are confiscated at the airport. And I saw a lot for the, uh, the Swiss cards, which I love. They got a screaming deal on it. But the reason you don't see them here is because they always break on me. The reason they break on me is because I keep these tools in my wallet. And like a lot of men, I keep my wallet in my back pocket, which means I'm sitting on my wallet, which means in turn, I'm sitting on my tool. Just like the tool logic, although this one was not carried as much, that's why it's still in decent shape here. Um, they're sandwich construction tools. Now you can see I have carried this one and you can see that it's already starting to come apart. Okay. You basically have a bunch of tools in here, but you have two skins, two bodies that sandwich together. And when you're sitting on this and you're constantly putting pressure on it, the points in which that they are connected eventually weaken and eventually break. On the Victorinox Swiss card, I've had tools. The knife uh, got so loose from being, you know, sat on that it fell out. Um, the pen didn't work, you know, that, that wouldn't stay in anymore. So over time they wore out and they no longer worked. The biggest advantage to this thing, which I'll show you, you know, how it works in a second. I'm sure you've seen it anyway, but just in case, I'll, I'll show you uh, exactly how it works. Um, the biggest advantage is that you will not get that kind of wear with this tool. And from carrying this and using this, uh, I can guarantee that. Uh, unlike these sandwich style tools, you're not going to have that issue. Um, another thing with these is that these are thicker. Okay, This thing, the card sharp, is actually as thin as a credit card or very close to it. So on wallets, and I will do a video in the future, I did briefly show this, this big skinny wallet which my amazing friend got me. Um, if you're watching, how you doing? <laughs> but anyway, um, this, uh, this wall is awesome. Super thin, I really like it. What I like about this, I don't wanna open up because I have a bunch of information exposed, but 
Um, let me do it like this. I can actually put this in a spot on these, you know, in any wallet that's meant for a credit card. Whereas a tool like this, it's just too fat to put in a credit card spot. I'd have to put it on one of the interior pockets. Does that make any sense? I can't do that. I can do that. So like when you unfold this, let's say I unfolded it, assuming we're looking on the inside, can't do this, can't shove it in any of those pockets, but I can put it in the, the middle divider. So anyway. <laughs> Um, so already there's two great advantages to this specific tool. Let me go over some of the specs. It, it is extremely light, extremely um, uh, sharp when you first get it. It is very, very sharp. Of course, it, it, I mean, it should be. It has an extremely thin blade. Um, the blade steel itself is just, it's like a lot of kind of random tools out there where it's touted as, you know, great uh, stainless steel, you know, or surgical stainless steel, and it really leaves a mystery. To most people, they will hear surgical stainless steel and think, wow, awesome, okay, if a doctor is using it in a scalpel, it must be great, I need it. For knife people, we're always too curious. <laughs> we're all very amateur metallurgists and we need to know exactly what kind of steel and if we don't, we're bothered by it and you get the big fat question mark in our head. Most people aren't knife people, let's just face it, okay? We're a small spec on the grand scheme of the globe. <laughs> so to most people, surgical stainless steel is impressive. To us, we want more information. Come on, what else you got for me? You know, give me some carbon content. Give me some more information. But what I can tell you is it's sharp. It's sharp and for its intended purpose. Um, you don't need to really, <laughs> you know, have great edge retention. Um, all that stuff kind of goes out the window for its, its actual purpose. And I think its actual purpose is an emergency knife when you're going to use it. Um, there's a lot of drawbacks to this, which I'll, I'll go over uh, as being a, a tool that you will regularly use. I think anyone who's seen it, anyone who's seen the concept of it, anyone who has them, you will also realize that realization is that this is a, a short-term use tool. You can carry it in your wallet forever as an emergency backup blade. That's exactly why I have one. That's what I'm going to do, and it's going to serve that purpose it, it very well. But it's not going to be an EDC blade or everyday carry. It's not going to be something you can take out and you know do a lot with all the time because eventually it will fail just by design. Doesn't mean it's bad. It serves a great purpose and what it's meant to do. I feel it does a very good job at. But um, it is super thin. Again, comparing it to this Two Logic card, which represents a lot of different multi-tool cards, you can see the difference there. The blade itself is, um, I think it's 2.2 millimeters uh, thick, which is extremely, extremely thin. Of course, it should be sharp. Uh, I like this um, brush stainless finish. It just gives it more of a real knife look. The other one that's all black, it's Teflon coated. But um, anyway, it weighs nothing. I mean, this, this, is, this weighs nothing to me. All right, this, you don't know it's in your pocket. This weighs 13 grams, which to us US folk, <laughs> since we have to be different from the rest of the world, um, that's 0.45 ounces, okay? It's less than a half an ounce. You will not know you have this, okay? In fact, you'll probably forget it's even in your wallet. So one day when you go to change your wallets, you'll find it and go, oh boy, and you'll put it in your new wallet, and then you'll forget it's there for another two years. Um, <laughs> but anyway, um, here's how it works. In case you haven't seen these, obviously it's flat in the wallet. Uh, one thing you'll see is it's, it's kind of floppy. Now in hand, it kind of feels floppy, flimsy, cheap, stuff like that. But when it's in your, uh, your wallet itself, the pocket of the wallet and or the, the, the part you're sliding your card into keeps it flat, it keeps it stable, so it doesn't feel flimsy, okay? So um, anyway, how this works is you have a small lock here that prevents the blade from popping out, which is very necessary. It's very simple to use. You see there's ridges on it, all right? Put your thumb on the top and then on the bottom, you kind of want to hold the back there, it makes it very easy to turn. Basically, you're rotating it, okay, so that it lines up so the blade will pop open. First step is to bend it around so it's sticking out, okay. Turn this over, bend the small piece in, which has little pillars, look like little standoffs or pins, okay. And the last part is to bend this over. Now, of course, all these little holes and pins line up and they pressure fit together, push firmly. You can see all the little pillars, they poke through the holes and everything kind of stays together. All right. Um, with use, you find that it, it's flimsy. It's flimsy because it's very skinny. By design, being so thin, you can't have an extremely sturdy knife. 
There are definitely things I like about the design and things I don't like about it, but by its nature, being so thin, you have to expect it being flimsy. Um, some pros is that there is give in the blade, depending on what you're using it for, that may be a pro. Depending on <laughs> other uses, it may be a big downside. Uh, I can tell you that it, it naturally feels kind of comfortable in the hand. The first thing that happened to me with actually using this all the time was that the pin that holds the back of this plate through the blade, it got very loose right away. Okay, any any pressure fit plastic in this, the body is made of uh, just, just standard polypropylene plastic, right? It's not, you know, anything crazy or anything, you know, new technology or anything like that. It's going to wear and the more times you you know, poke it through, it's gonna get looser and looser and looser with time. Again, one of the reasons why you're not gonna have this long term. More of an emergency knife. Um, but the handle, although after, and believe me, I did this a couple hundred times already after popping it open and pushing it back together, I mean, it stayed fairly nice. Okay, you can see there on the front, there is uh, five individual holes. So I guess if one or two weaken, you still have some backups. Eventually, opening and closing it, it will um, no longer hold. All right, that's just, just by its nature. But the first thing I noticed is the blade, because of any kind of lateral pressure, it wants to pop it out. So when you're using the knife, and because it is such a thin stock, all right, and by the way, the blade length is 2.55 inches, or 65 millimeters for the rest of the world, <laughs> once again. Um, when you want to hold it you know, in a natural grip like this, and there is some jimping on top, which is functional, it's just so thin, when you hold it like this, you naturally want to use it. You end up getting a little bit of lateral pressure, which pops that open, okay? Then at this point, you know, it doesn't affect it too much in use, but it just feels flimsy. It feels, you can tell it's apart, feels cheap. You don't want a knife to feel like it's falling apart in your hands. Very, very simple solution to this. It's just a grip change, okay? Instead of holding it naturally like a regular folder, what I do with this is I use a pinch grip, okay? Or I will choke up like this, put the middle finger right underneath the Ricasso. Put the thumb on here and then put my pointer finger on the top and I'll use this to say rip open boxes or to just uh, you know cut something really quickly. So it's just a simple grip change gives you the stability you need so that it's not flopping all over the place. Just use a pinch grip and whatever is comfortable to you. Only like this it will pop open okay it doesn't take much to make that wiggle back and forth and it does not feel secure in your hand. You can see how much give you actually get because it, it's made to fold okay. So not a daily user by any means. Um, the, this flat folding over I think serves two purposes. Its main purpose is to easily un, uh, you know, unfold it. Okay, just push on there and the whole thing will unfold. But I also found that it's very functional as a guard to keep your hand from sliding forward if you were to, I don't know why you would, but if you were to thrust cut you know, or stab into something, you know, you'd be in very aggressive stab in a box or something, you're not gonna slip off onto that blade and cut yourself. So it does function as a, uh, I guess a safety feature, if you will. Um, what else? Uh, manufacturers of this, it shows that these are made in both uh, the UK as well as China. I assume both are listed because perhaps originally it was done in the UK and if they're mass producing them now because of popularity, then you kind of switch over to China, you get a cheaper price. That is completely 110% assumption. <laughs> Don't take my word for it. But when I see that, when I see any manufacturer you know, and it'll say like origin of whatever, US, China, US, Taiwan, you know, in this case, UK, China, I've seen, uh, you know, Japan, Taiwan, any combination to me, that usually means that it originated in a regular, you know, one of the countries, and then they went, yep, a lot cheaper to do it this way. So just an assumption, there's no proof of that. Just, uh, just what I think. Um, completely random, but I know you've been staring at that <laughs> the whole video. Just to mention it, because I'm gonna to try to avoid the questions. Been working in the yard, my hands are beat to crap. Okay, you can see all the cuticles. Yes, it's annoying, and that was a huge blister that ripped off like the bubble on a pizza. That's why I don't like that slice, because it reminds me of blisters. So back to the knife. <clears throat> um, these are very cool, and they really do serve a purpose. They're, they're nice and sharp, out of the box. Um, they store well in your wallet, you don't, you know, know it's there, it's thin, it's not gonna break in your wallet. Like other awesome, this is an awesome, awesome tool, as is the Victorinox Swiss cards. They break. If you happen to keep your, you know, wallet in a bag of some kind, keep it in the front pocket, somewhere you're not gonna sit on it or put a pressure on it, stick with this, they're awesome. If you're like most people out there, most adult men, you wear your wallet in your back pocket and you're sitting on it. This is where this thing shines. And this is why I like this so much. 
but it's definitely by far not something you're going to use often with much success. Okay, again, kind of a mystery steel. Um, I did touch this up. It, it's very, very soft. Um, it, it takes an edge very well. It's fine. It's not going to be anything, you know, super impressive, but it's very easy to sharpen. Uh, it's just that it does not retain that edge retention. And I cannot explain further because I don't have the information available to me to let you know exactly why, you know, scientifically. But I can tell you it's soft. So it's not going to be a daily user. Just, the, you know, the, the design itself is not going to hold up to the abuse. Um, the popping and, and snapping is eventually going to wear. Um, like I said, it's been great. The body's awesome. Up here, this main pin by the blade has not been great. It does not really take much to pop that open, but as I mentioned, just change of a grip changes that. Um, yeah, the folds on these, I mean, the plastic itself, the polypropylene is thin to begin with. But if we look at the folds, the plastic on the folds, I mean, take a close look at it. You know what? Here, I knew I took this out for a reason. Take a close look at this. That plastic, that's pretty thin. The fold, that's really, really thin. I mean, a fraction of a millimeter. Okay, when you bend that back and forth, back and forth, back and forth we go, <laughs> eventually it's gonna snap. Now, um, I don't necessarily want to try to break this, but I did go like this a bunch of times thinking that that would happen right away. It has not happened right away. I can almost guarantee it will eventually happen. I don't know how much this is gonna take. If you actually try to rip it, it seems fairly sturdy. So my, my telling you that this might eventually rip is just an assumption. It really, for, for being that thin, I mean, you saw that. Let's look at it again. It's extremely thin, but um, I am surprised how much pressure it's actually taking. I mean, you can see the, my finger flexing here. I'm really trying to break this right now. I really don't want to break things because I do like this in the wallet, but it's going to take a fair amount of use. The problem is that that uh, point is a moot point because these pins will for certain um, deform with use and popping the uh, in and out of these um, the holes on the other side. So. Anyway, um, serves a function, serves a purpose. I like it, don't expect uh, much out of it. It's definitely, in my opinion, something that's reserved for emergencies. Most of us knife guys have a bunch of blades on us anyway, but what an awesome excuse to have another one in our wallet. Uh, the price on these are $25. Um, for $25, I think it's kind of, uh, it, it's, it's black or white. Either you want one, you get it for 25 bucks, or you don't want one. It's just how it is. Uh, of course, I like to see these for, for what you're actually getting. I have no, uh, no idea on <clears throat> the manufacturing process for these. I'm sure I'm underestimating what it takes to make these. But I would say, I, I, of course, the cheaper the better. I think that uh, they'd sell maybe 10 times as many of these if they were 10 bucks, 9.99. $25 plus shipping, you're getting into a range where you have a lot of options for knives, but you don't have a whole option, a lot of options like this. These other forms of multi-tool slash cards, uh, you know, knife, credit card things, um, anywhere from $10 to $20 anyway. This is definitely unique. There's nothing out in the market that's quite like this. Um, I like it. I'm not going to buy a bunch of them, but... Uh, I don't know if it's something you like uh, and it's worth checking out. It's not $50, it's not $100 or anything ridiculous. So, you know, it is what it is. It's That's that's your call. <laughs> I can't tell you if it's something that's gonna be worth it uh, for the money. I think it's worth looking into. I'll leave it at that. If you happen to have a friend that has one, check it out. If you don't, you might have to fork over the 25 plus shipping for one. But uh, I like the, uh, the brush stainless um, a lot more than the Teflon one. I don't know. If you want it to be more covert and really not look like a knife at all, to most people it wouldn't. I mean, this one obviously stands out as a knife blade. Get the Teflon coated one, it'll be all black and it'll look even less like a knife. But it serves a purpose, it's pretty interesting. It's pretty cool. It is the size of a, a credit card. I ain't joking about that. Um, it's pretty versatile. It's just, uh, it's definitely not something you wanna use over and over again because it will eventually fail on you and possibly be dangerous in that situation. So. Take it for what it's worth, use it for its intended purpose. And uh, I think a lot of you guys out there will enjoy it. Some won't, that's just how the cookie crumbles. <laughs> Doesn't matter what I'm talking about. But anyway, I thank you very much today for your time. 
And I thank you for not asking me what this is. That's why I talked about it. What is that? Oh, Jeff just had dinner. He's got spaghetti sauce on his hand. Can you see it? Something like this is annoying because like the whole video, you just want to like uh, just wipe it off or you have no idea what it is. But now you do. It's my skin. It's the second layer of skin. So can't do nothing about that. Kind of want to keep it. <sighs> All right. Thanks for watching. Appreciate your time. And I really hope you enjoy the rest of your day. I'll see you guys soon.